quite an interesting story there. Let me bring in my guest, our Friday guest, guest this evening, uh, Pinky Gelani. Nice hey, to Bessie. see you. Nice to see you. Good, good Gosh. looking. Le look who's talking. <laughs> I'll stop that. <laughs> You're the model over here. What do you think of taking 300 hawkers uh -huh. to Kigali for benchmarking? Yeah, I saw something on this on social media this morning. Someone was calling Kenya uh -huh. Banana Republic. <laughs> and I just feel like instead, if we have the money, why not fly in a few professionals? Right to come and educate our people right. here and, you know, invest, probably just invest more in our, our city right. first. Rather than sending pe 300 of them. You know. I mean, it should be a fantastic opportunity for them, but, but it doesn't bring, really But then bring make people sense. in so you can educate more, maybe. Yeah, interesting. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Coming back to our conversation. Yes. And you've been doing uh, quite a lot. Um, but let I me try. ask you something. Mm -hmm. You've been on radio before. I Do have. You, does this miss you? Like the adrenaline like when we're starting yes, the show. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I mean, just, just being live mm -hmm. always you know it's just that rush yeah. and speaking to so many people from right. all walks of life right. of course I do miss it it's it made me who I am yeah. so yeah it does bring back memories just remind us how you used to like um, greet people <laughs> when you're on radio let's go on capital yeah. FM. am yeah. I allowed to say capital of FM just say radio <laughs> Maisha <laughs> Hey, how are you doing? You're listening to Radio Maisha. My name is Pinky Gilani, and up for coming up a few songs and some fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you do? You, do you miss that uh, being on radio? Yeah, I yeah. mean, like I said, it made me who I am. Yeah. It, it made me interact with a lot of people, right. and it, I totally enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. It was fun. It was fun, mm -hmm. and now you're doing quite a lot. We'll be getting into the details of what you're doing so far. Um, but one of the things that you know, I got that uh, when I was researching and reading about you, is that you know, you're, you're such a woman of strength. You Thank lost, you. you know, four pregnancies, and here you are. Yes. You have two kids right now. Yes. Tell us about that because that's one of the things that many women I so online are relating uh, you know yeah. to you with so um when i lost my first pregnancy mm -hmm. it was a very rude shock mm -hmm. i thought as a woman i'm i it's my you, birthright right. to be a mother and you're healthy enough and all i had to do was get pregnant right. and the rest takes care of itself but of course through the the losses the miscarriages mm -hmm. i educated myself on what happens and they say one in four pregnancies mm -hmm. end up in a miscarriage mm -hmm. and it's very common right. as well but you know I, I talk uh, for therapy. Mm -hmm. I talk to anyone. So mm -hmm. I'll talk to my hairdresser. And this is what I, I was talking to my hairdresser. And other women in the salon are like, yeah, but it happened to me. And oh, it happened. Okay. And I'm like, but why don't more people talk, talk about, about this? It. Because it shows uh, a sign of failure mm -hmm. on the women. Mm -hmm. And it's n you've done it's blamed nothing. On the women. Yeah, it's blamed yeah, yeah. on the woman. Mm -hmm. And you've done nothing to lose that child. Right. In fact, quite the opposite. You were very careful. Yeah. And it just happens. It's circumstances. It does happen. But then it happens once, twice, thrice, then four times. There is that point that you felt like, you know what, maybe this was not meant to be. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, so I lost three pregnancies before I got my baby girl, okay. <laughs> who's okay. now seven. Yeah. Yeah. And you Congratulations know, for that. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And mm. then I, in between my, my daughter and my son, mm -hmm. I lost another pregnancy. And when I lost that pregnancy, I spoke to my husband mm -hmm. and I'm like maybe we're being greedy <laughs> maybe we just need to be one, grateful yeah, we have one yeah, yeah. and you know God has his ways right. um, and he puts you through a journey right for purposes that you find out at a later L stage later I like sharing my story because mm -hmm. women draw strength from it mm -hmm. because it does inspire other women a lot of women do write to me mm -hmm. about it they ask me who my doctor was mm -hmm. who helped me what I went through mm -hmm. and you know the fact is that when you do lose a pregnancy you must mourn that child mm -hmm. you cannot what just does say, that mean what does that mean to mourn that child I mean you were pregnant right so and Is there it, a way it doesn't to do mean it? that you're not right. a mother mm. because you didn't have that mm -hmm. child. You mm -hmm. are a mum. So yeah, I mean mourning. How mm -hmm. how does a how does a person mourn? Mm. There, there's grief. There's those seven stages of grief that you must go through, mm -hmm. and you must acknowledge them in order. to to you know to move on yeah yeah and it is okay to mourn because i think society also says like you know just oh, maybe it was three months it was two, only three yeah, months just try what again, you mean? And again just get yeah. over it yeah and it's it's hard it's because hard. it plays uh you know your it, it uh, affects your body as mm. well interesting yeah. and that is just one of the hard you know d and difficult times that you've gone through the other that's you know i found so interesting is when you lo also lost your dad yes um and you know i read that you know as a family at that time, you could not even afford the basics. And then so, when somebody looks at you right now, they'd be like, yeah, right. I mean, this girl, fine I mean, looking and everything. What happened yeah. was uh, I lost my dad when I was six. Mm -hmm. He was a very wealthy man. Mm -hmm. Very, very wealthy right. man. Uh, but 
I think he did not have his affairs in order, mm -hmm. maybe, or uh, a lot of people took advantage of the situation. Mm -hmm. And my mom lost a lot. Mm -hmm. That's the way I'll put it. So right. it got to a stage where we were in a situation that was dire straits. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was complicated. It was complicated. Yeah. But you were able to pick up yourself. Is that the time that you decided, you know what, I'm going into modeling, I'm not going to try new things? It, um, it was all coinciding. Mm -hmm. Everything was together. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a struggle behind the scenes and I just uh, held it together because my mom was my inspiration, mm. a very strong woman. Mm -hmm. You know that, that saying about no matter how you feel, show up, dress up, or whatever, dress up and show up. And whatever. Show up. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So that was her. That, okay. that was her. And mm. um, I guess it rubbed off. On yeah. you. Yeah. And then here goes your modeling career. So are you a model still? Show, uh, you know, when we started the, the word show, is we're like. Modella. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> it can't be. <laughs> so do yeah. you do it? Do of you still course. do well, it? Well, if I'm asked to, yeah. for sure. I so mean, you do the photo shoots and yes, everything? Yes, yeah, the photo yeah. shoots, the catwalk, mm -hmm. if I'm asked to. What, I what love opportunities it. can you say that um, that career or that opportunity gave you? Well, it gave me a lot of confidence. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. where, you know, that's where I became like who I am right. because of being on stage and being in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. And um, it just allowed me to be versatile right. I was able to be different personalities mm -hmm. yes, yes. through modeling right and it it also gave me great respect mm -hmm. for our Kenyan designers mm -hmm. and the fashion industry right. in uh, Kenya. In Kenya. Yeah. And then um, we're about to take a short commercial break, sure. but uh, you're also working with UNHCR. I saw some yes. pictures of you in Kakuma. How yes. has that been for you? That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the journey, the, the fact that UNHCR approached me to work with them yes, yes. was completely um, an honor. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's amazing to be able to go to Kakuma and speak to the refugees mm -hmm. and hear their, their stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them are just heart wrenching, mm -hmm. and and you really need to be tough yeah. to listen to right. what they have to say. Yeah. Right. But you know, I mean, my, my role with UNHCR is a high level influencer, mm -hmm. so I have to raise awareness mm -hmm. on the refugee mm -hmm. as well as raise funds mm. for UNHCR. So how often do you do you go to you know to Kakuma and other refugee camps, or is it just Kakuma? I've just been to Kakuma for now. Mm -hmm. um, they don't send me to the other ones. Okay. I, I guess security reasons, yes, etc. And um, it's just, it's amazing. You have to go there because I had a really different vision mm -hmm. of a refugee camp. Mm -hmm. But it's its just, it's a buzzing place, yeah. you know, and everybody's positive, everyone is enterprising. Mm -hmm. The girls, I have to say, the girls there want their education and are not afraid to embrace everything the mm. education is giving them. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they want out. They're hungry. Yeah, they don't want to be there. Yeah. So they're using everything, every tool given mm. to them, they're so using they're like it. like a sponge, anything you give it to Absolutely. them. They're so hungry, they just yeah, take yeah. it in they and they want in, to yeah. succeed. Interesting. Pinky, we'll continue the conversation okay. shortly. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we'll take a short commercial break right now. Don't go away. Text me or tweet me rather all the <laughs> questions that you want me uh, to pass over to uh, Pinky Gilani. She's our guest this evening. Let's take a break. We'll be right back.